I've been waiting for that to dry. I've put a couple of coats of impasto gel or heavy gel gloss on the painting and then a coat of what's called universal medium over the top of that. And I've done that for a few reasons. Um, the impasto gel or the heavy gel gloss is there to create a little bit of separation between the background and this uh, bird in the foreground. I want to create the illusion of the pelican sort of coming forward. Um, and then I put the universal medium over the top of that so that if while I'm painting this, I'm not happy with anything, I can get some unlocking formula and wipe it off. So it's sort of like having a get out of jail free card. The thing with this though, is that I've got the pelican in here in the background and there's a tendency when you put the impasto gel down and you put those layers of clear to sort of, it looks a little bit unnatural. I still want the bird while it's, I want it to come forward. I still want it to be in the painting. So I've sort of done this under painting. So there'll be bits of that showing through so that the, the bird will somehow still be linked to the painting, if that makes any sense. It makes sense in here. <laughs> so I've just got um, a Telly at Free Flow here because it's, I just want to cover this white fairly solidly and that's what Atelier Free Flow does beautifully. I can go there like that. Leave a fluffy edge along there. I love the pelicans got that lovely little tuft on the back of their head, so I'll just put a bit of that there. Just because I love it. It should get me out of trouble for the white for the moment. So I'm just mixed up some burnt umber and French ultramarine blue, and that will be my blacks and my pelican.
So I've mixed up that um, darker colour with the burnt umber and French ultramarine blue with a pile of white and maybe pushed up the blue a little bit and that'll make all my shadow colours in my pelican. So I've grabbed a little bit of that blue-grey colour, tiny bit of yellow, not that much yellow, <laughs> and a bit of dioxazine purple. And this colour will go on the underside of the pelican and will be the light bouncing back up off the sand underneath onto his belly. I'll snip that bit out, bit out later. Just getting a bit of napful crimson, way too much. A bit of cadmium yellow medium, a little bit of dioxazine purple. Oops. And a little bit more toxicine purple. <laughs> I'm just going to dirty that up a little bit too by putting a tiny bit of French ultramarine in there. There we go. So I've added a little bit of white and yellow to that to give me that lovely little sort of weird pinky colour that they get on their beaks. I've actually had a close look at the internal workings of a pelican. I got bitten by one once trying to rescue him she got all he or she'd got all caught up in some fishing line and I couldn't get near her so I thought I'd put a, a branch over her to hold her down while I got the fishing line undone. Turned out she got out. <laughs> the whole world went pink with a little black dot at the end of it. <laughs> I've just added a little bit of white to that and I wanna bump up that pouch there. Whoop. And there. Added a whole pile of white to that and I'll just finish that off there. So that'll get me out of trouble for a minute. So I, I've got this uh, shadow colour and I've added a little bit of white and a bit of uh, French ultramarine blue to it. And I'm just going to use that as my little transition colour and I'm going to break up the brush strokes a little bit there because I want that lovely kind of fluffy 
think that they get about them. Just put a little bit right between his shoulder blades down there. Or her shoulder blades. Don't know how you tell. A male from a female pelican. <laughs> Okay, and I think I'll just soften that up a bit. And now I'll repeat the same thing with pure white. Breaking up those brush strokes a little bit makes him look kind of fluffy. I'll look at that a little bit later on and sometimes I'll mix a little glaze up or something and just push into that transition there just to get a bit more colour in. So I've mixed up a little bit of burnt umber, very dry, and I'm just going to warm up this shadow a little bit. And it should, in theory, make this water look a bit shallower again. I started to lose some of the warmth in the water. Like that. So I'm going to do a little experiment here. I've changed my paint. I'm actually using Atelier Interactive, which is thicker and warmer. And I'm hoping the thickness will give me a little bit more texture and body in this area and create the illusion of feathers. And that that slightly different temperature in the white will also add to the illusion of um, texture and the light hitting it in different angles. So I've accidentally put a blob of paint here on my canvas, but because I put the universal medium on, I can just give that a wipe like that. And if it doesn't come off first go, a little bit of unlocking formula.
and it magically goes away. That's why I put that universal medium down as a coat. It sort of um, means that I can wipe stuff off with this later on. So I just want to bump up this shadow area in here a little bit, but I want it to look like it's coming up under that wing. So I'm just going to drop there like that and just with a very dry brush, scrub that in. And in a minute, I'll come back and soften that up. There'd be a little bit of that in here too. <laughs> it's getting a wedge shaped head. <laughs> So I've just thinned out that colour with a little bit of white and a bit more French ultramarine blue. And I'm just pushing up into there and softening that up like that. Kind of dra drag the brush stroke sort of roughly back that way so it creates the impression of it trying to make itself all streamlined for flight. Something fantastic about watching a pelican fly low over the sand. So what I'm going to do now is get this colour and this colour and blend those two together along that edge. Now they've got a much thinner neck so I won't put too much highlight along there but as they start to get out into their body here they kind of barrel out a little bit so I've bring, I'll bring that colour up a little bit further, create the impression of a little bit more volume around the midsection. Just do that there too. Now I've got that colour neat and I'll just sharpen that up there. It doesn't hurt just to let the brush strokes break up a little bit there and I'm going to put that on the underside of his beak as well. Just because the light would be bouncing up off the sand. So I've mixed up uh, pretty much neat French ultramarine blue and white. And I'm just going to, just along that edge there, I don't want to come down too far. Just there like that and I'll put a little bit across there. And just push into here. Like that. That's a much prettier colour. It kind of makes that transition look a little bit gentler. I'll just do that there. And I think I'll make that little shadow down his, between his shoulder blades that colour as well. And here also. I'm just going to skinny that up a little bit there. And I'll put a shadow in, strengthen that shadow up later on. It makes me a bit happier. They truly are odd birds. Not totally sold on that blue there, it, it might change colours, I think it's it's not working for me. It was an experiment that didn't work. I 
often improve when I bump up the wide a bit. But So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to trim the bird here and there and change a few shapes here and there, a little bit of fine tuning. Um, so I sort of need to go into the painting for a little while. So this has been a, a fun exercise. Um, I'm going to plug away on this for a few more hours. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you subscribe um, or like or even become a member.